This is from Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules from Life. This is from rule number three, which is um, make friends with people who want the best for you. This is titled My Friend Chris, the section of rule number three, make friends with people who want the best for you, is titled My Friend Chris and His Cousin. I had a friend at the time. This was when he was, Dr. Peterson was growing up in Canada, in Alberta, Canada. I had a friend at the time, we'll call him Chris. He was a smart guy, he read a lot. He liked science fiction of the kind I was attracted to. Bradbury, Heinlein, Clark. He was inventive. He was interested in electronic kits and gears and motors. He was a natural engineer. All this was overshadowed, however, by something that had gone wrong in his family. I don't know what it was. His sisters were smart and his father was soft-spoken and his mother was kind. The girls seemed okay, but Chris had been left unattended in some important way. Despite his intelligence and curiosity, he was angry, resentful, and without hope. All this manifested itself in material form in the shape of his 1972 blue Ford pickup truck. My first car was a 19, the first vehicle was a 1972 orange Chevy pickup truck. This truck is a 1972 Ford blue pickup truck. The notorious vehicle, vehicle had at least one dent in every quarter panel of its damaged external body. Worse, it had an equivalent number of dents inside. Those were pounded by the impact of the body parts of friends against the internal surfaces during the continual accidents that resulted in the outer dents. Chris's truck was the exoskeleton of a nihilist. It had the perfect bumper sticker, Be alert, the world needs more alerts. The irony is produced in combination with the dense elevated and nicely to theater of the absurd. Very little of that, so to speak, accidental. Every time Chris crashed his truck, his father would fix it and buy him something else. He had a motorbike and a van for selling ice cream. He didn't care for his motorbike and he sold no ice cream. He often expressed dissatisfaction with his father and their relationship, but his dad was older and unwell, diagnosed with an illness only after many years. It, he didn't have the energy he should have. Maybe he couldn't pay enough attention to his son. Maybe that's all it took to fix fracture their relationship. Chris had a cousin, Ed, who was about two years younger. I liked him as much as you can like the younger cousin of a teenage friend. He was a tall, smart, charming, good-looking kid. He was witty, too. You would have predicted a good future for him had you met him when he was 12. But Ed drifted slowly downhill into a dropout semi-drifting mode of existence. He didn't get as angry as Chris, but he was just as confused. If you knew Ed's friends, you might say that it was peer pressure that set him down the downward path, but his peers weren't obviously any more lost or delinquent than he was, although they were generally somewhat less bright. This, this reminds me of my son. It was also the case that Ed's and Chris, or me and Michael's friends were, weren't very bright growing up. It was also the case that Ed's and Chris's situation did not appear particularly improved by their discovery of marijuana. Hmm. Reminding the Nord of our teenagers, but marijuana isn't bad for everyone any more than alcohol is bad for everyone. Sometimes it even appears to improve people, but it didn't improve Ed. It didn't improve Chris either. Uh, marijuana does seem to improve the vast majority of the people that use it over the age of 25. Um, under the age of 25, and more in particular, under the age of 18, um, you have more um, uh, consequences for it. To amuse themselves on long nights, Chris and I and Ed and the rest of the teenage jayers drove around and around our own 1970s cars and pickup trucks. We cruised down Main Street along Railroad Avenue, up past the high school, around the north end of town, over to the west or up Main Street, around the north end of town, over to the east and so on, endlessly repeating the theme. If we weren't driving in town, we were driving in the countryside. A century earlier, surveyors had laid out a vast grid across the entire 300,000 square mile expanse of the great western prairie. Every two miles north, a plowed gravel road stretched forever east to west. Every mile west, another traveled north to south. We never ran out of roads. That was, um, uh, that reminds me of the famous um, Richard Linkletter film, Dazed and Confused where it's and they're driving their 1970s cars and trucks around, listening to Lowrider and all the 70s themed music. Um, that's where he obviously, like, if he is not familiar with it, that's the iconic scene, and then it slipped into his subconscious. Um, that particular section, I think, because he was kind of like, not so, I don't know. That one wasn't that great, I guess.
psychiatric, that little section, it could have used some work or it could have been left on the chopping block. Anyways, um, that was from uh, 12, Jordan Peterson's Twelve Rules of Life, rule number three. My name is Gregory Brandt. Um, I wrote a book called Gonzo Education. There's a chapter in there called 72 Chevy. Um, the section that we just read was about a 72 Ford, uh, but I actually had a 72 Chevy, and you're welcome to read that. Um, there's a link on this channel, on my channel here. Thanks for watching. Uh, click the thumbs up button and smash the subscribe button. Thanks again.